And now we will begin uh, the work of today, the pleasure of today in hearing this lecture in focusing on women transcending boundaries. Today's distinguished lecture is Annette Hoffman. I will not take up time in a long introduction of Annette, just a few words so that you might grasp the importance of what she does. And she would be the first to say it is what she does, not who she is, because she lives for what she does. She is executive director of the Israel Religious Action Center since 2002. She guides them in their work to promote Jewish pluralism, tolerance, and equality, to combat racism, corruption, and religious coercion. During her tenure, she has expanded their mission to go beyond the courts and the Knesset and to engage in helping people directly through social action. Previously, Anat Held was in service as a Jerusalem City Councilwoman for 14 years, carving out a niche for herself as an untiring warrior for justice and equality. She is a founding member of Women of the Wall in a city where women are traditionally consigned to a subordinate role. She has led in the battle for the right of women to pray at the Western Wall and for equal pay for equal work. She was born in Jerusalem. Anat in her teens was an Israeli swimming champion. After army service, she received her BS in psychology and the, at the University of California in Los Angeles and then pursued graduate studies at Barilan University. We are delighted to let you know that Anat has agreed to hold a post-lecture conversation at 3.30 today in the Hall of Christ. And you may know or may not, the Hall of Christ is just directly across the path. This event is being co-sponsored by the Everett Jewish Life Center, the co-sponsor of Anat's visit with us. And I want to give very special thanks to two people who worked extremely hard to make this happen. One is Edith Everett, who is sit seated here with us, and the other is Maureen Ravenio from the Department of Religion. Without the two of them, it wouldn't have happened. Thank you. The title of Anat's lecture today is Women Off the Wall. And now just a special word about those who fund uh, this lecture today, and especially a sad word. We are grateful to the Jack and Elizabeth Gelman and the Zaretsky Family Fund. And for those of you who know the Zaretskys, just two weeks ago, Alan Zaretsky, very young man, died very, very suddenly. And so it is with great sadness and honoring in, of his life that today we give special thanks for the support that they are giving to the Department of Religion and especially to this lecture today. So would you join me now in the special privilege of welcoming Anat Hoffman. So shalom. Can you all hear me? It's wonderful to be here. I was in the morning lecture and I saw a man up a needle point and he was making a uh, picture of a car I love this man <laughs> I've never seen a man needle point <laughs> certainly not a car and he was matching the colors and everything we will win if there are men like that it's wonderful <laughs> I want that car <laughs> okay anyway so um, I want to thank it's the same list, but I need to thank them because they did bring me from Israel. First, Joan and the Department of Religion. Edith Everett, who is a partner in crime for the last 20 years. The Jewish Federation of Cleveland, great that you came. The Park Synagogue that got on a, tr on a, on a bus. ARTSA, the Association of Reform Zionists in America. And United Synagogue of Conservative Judaism that are here to sponsor the uh, we're going to have a, uh, what's it called? Reception. A reception at 5.30. And if you have $36 and you want to go to that reception, great food, nice people, wonderful view, and more of me if you wish to have it. 
I have uh, never been to the Hall of Christ. I live uh, five minutes from the stations of uh, Christ. Every time I walk by, I can't help myself. I touch, there is a place where for the last 2,000 years, people put their hand where he put his hand as he was leaning because he was carrying the heavy cross. So what do you think happens after 2,000 years of people putting their hand there? There's a sign of a human hand in the wall, and you can't help it. Everybody goes by, put their hand in it. But I've never been to the Hall of Christ. The closest I've come is to be with John Campbell in Oslo. So uh, we'll be talking about Israel and some of the um, challenges of Israel. Many of you um, will feel a little uncomfortable. And uh, because here is something I've learned in many years of marriage. I think love is what remains after you know the truth. <laughs> And uh, so we will have a little test of love of Israel now because we'll be talking some truths, some hard truths about what's happening in Israel. I think uh, one of the mistaken notions that we have in our sovereign Jewish state is uh, that we didn't listen to your brilliant Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson said that in religion, it's the opposite of politics. In politics, united we stand, divided we fall. In religion, it's the opposite. Divided we stand, united we fall. So, nowhere but in Chautauqua can you see so much division and so much flourishing of, of religion. I walk here, I see parts of Christianity I didn't even know exist, and trust me, I come from a city that has 40 different religious uh, Christian sects. So really, you are thriving religiously in the United States, and you don't have one state religion. In Israel, we unfortunately do have a state religion, and it is Orthodox Judaism. There's nothing wrong with Orthodox Judaism. Some of my very best friends are Orthodox Jews. <laughs> why is it funny? Okay, I have some people here who will explain why that's funny. Uh, <clears throat> but when you have state funding of such an extent behind one type of religion, it does become corrupt. And if Reform Judaism, which I belong to, had that much funding and that much of a monopoly, then we would have been no less corrupt. So there is corruption and there is a rigidness and there is no pluralism in Judaism in Israel, or not enough pluralism. I run in in English, the organization I run is called the Israel Religious Action Center, which has the unfortunate acronym of IRAC. <laughs> it's not easy to travel the world with an Israeli passport and be the executive of IRAC. <laughs> you kind of get randomly selected to be checked every time on everything. In Hebrew, it's worse. I'm, called, I'm the director of Hamerkaz Le Pluralism Yehudi. Does the word pluralism, you know what that means? Pluralism in Hebrew is pluralism. We don't have a word for it in modern Hebrew. Well, there is an academy of Hebrew words and letters where you send ideas for new words that are needed. Four years ago, I wrote them that I need a word, integrity. They wrote back, use it in a sentence. <laughs> So, integrity is four years old. I will say it, and you will try to say it too. Yoshra. Yoshra. Music. Yoshra is integrity. It comes from the words yashar. Yashar meaning straight. Then I saw it works. I wrote them about two years ago that I need a word, accountability, and here is a sentence. <laughs> We will all say accountability. Let me just warn you. You spit when you say it. <laughs> it's not to be said often. <laughs> it's a hard word to say. It's nine months old. And if there are Israelis, are there Israelis here? Israelis don't yet know it. It's brand new. Achrayutiyut. <laughs> Achrayutiyut. Say it. <laughs> Man, more people here than in all the planet are saying it right now. That's accountability. Pluralism, 
not yet a word. So think about it. We are 63 years old. Accountability is nine months old. Integrity is four years old. And pluralism.